Greetings. I'm making this video to help a friend out. She's new to Excel. She's a baker. I, I don't bake, but I use Excel for construction cost estimating. So I wanted to put a quick video together. I, I put a couple things into Excel, um, looking around online for different things that bakers and chefs might find helpful in Excel. Um, so I so I built something and I'm going to share it with her. I haven't yet. And I suspect after I it's so it's, it's partially it's partially complete, but I'm not exactly sure how to complete it to help her exactly in her in her um, baking business, cookie baking business. Um, so it's going to be a two step process, hopefully another video to follow. Um, but this video, what I want to do is just go through some of the basics of Excel and explain to her and anyone who's interested in how to um, build such a template as I did here. Um, there are a lot of templates out there. It, it appears there are templates out there for re restaurant owners and things. There, A lot of the templates that I saw looked really big. Um, and and even though they're ready to go, maybe they're maybe too big and not custom to exactly what somebody needs. So I think it's a good thing to build your own templates. That's what I do with my students in construction cost estimating. Um, so that's what I did here. And just with the basics of Excel, nothing particularly tricky. Um, I could accomplish a fair amount. Like I said, the next step is to share it with her and to get some feedback as to how I could um, improve it. Anyway, let me jump in and I just want to go through some of the basics of Excel that I use to create this. So um, I have down the bottom here, you can see I have different sheets in my file. So here are some Excel notes, which I'll return to. Some information on groceries. Here's a peanut butter filled chocolate chip cookie, cookie recipe, one of her favorites. Um, I just created this sheet here. I'm just going to move it down the end. And then I have two sheets on conversions, baking conversions. Um, and then that down here I press and I get another sheet. And then, and then whenever you're on, on something in, in Excel, like many programs, if I'm on this sheet, meaning my, my cursor is on it and I right click, I get a context menu that's specifically about the sheets. So I could del delete, rename, move, or copy sheets. So this one, for instance, I could come here and I could move or copy, move to the end, create a copy, and then I get a whole second peanut butter um, chocolate recipe there. So that that's just to say that if I don't need to retype everything, once you've created one, um, it's often, you know, co mm -hmm. copying, so I'm going to delete this one. Copying is obviously a lot quicker than creating everything from scratch. Um, so that's the context menu for sheets. Similarly, when we have a cell right here, that's one cell, I could also right click and then I get a, a context menu related to cells. And for selecting cells, I can click and hold down with the left and I could select a lot of cells that way. I can also hold control and select cells um, that are not contiguous or connected to each other. Um, I could select a column. Columns are across the top and they are um, identified by letters. Rows are here on the y-axis. So rows are identified by numbers. So this cell is B3, for instance. Um, so that's just different ways to select things. If I want to insert so let me just put some numbers here. So now if I wanted to insert a column in between these two, I would just get on this column, the E column, right click and insert. And you'll see that it will insert a new column in between the one and the two. So new column coming in before the E column. See how that works? Similarly, if we could do it in this direction, if I select six and I insert, it's going to insert a new row between five and six. And that's what it did there. And also very handy, I could select seven, hold shift, and select 15. And then I have this whole group of eight cells, um, nine cells. And then if I right click and insert, it will insert nine 
I'm sorry, rows, not cells, nine rows. I will now it'll insert nine new rows like that. And you can see that the number two dropped by nine new rows. So that's how we do that. Um, <clears throat> other things that are very helpful is coming up here to the formatting and in, in general, cells come up as general. Um, if you don't do anything to them, they are general type of, it's kind of like how the, um, how it's formatted. So there are different things that we could make it $2. We could turn it into currency. We could turn it into dates, all the different things that could show up in an Excel file. Um, and as I go through these sheets, I will explain if I, which ones I changed and why, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I'll go through and explain it as I, as I do. Um, typically not dates like that though, typically numbers. And then also important to know is down here at the bottom, after I've turned it into a number, I could come to more number formats and that opens up this dialog box where I could choose the, um, the number of decimals that I want to follow. In cost estimating, we use two. I don't know in baking if there's if it's needed. It depends, I suppose, on what kind of number or unit we're describing. Um, but anyway, here we could get more detail about all the different number types. So I'm just going to leave it at two decimal places. And that's what we have there. Um, other formatting things that I use a lot are here. So this is grids. So I could select a big space and turn on a grid, a border, they call it. And then I could also make a thick border around the outside like that. Select and then thick border. So that helps to make things more legible. So that I, I really didn't do it here. But for instance, up here, I have my um, recipe name and the where I found it in the book. So maybe we want to make that. So just, just to make things read, read a little more easily, I would say, um, you know, something across the top, we could put thick borders on it, um, and also use the use of color. So here I explain, for instance, um, on my Excel notes that gray blocks are equation answers. Don't input da data into the gray blocks. Green blocks are where we enter the data. So enter the data here. So this is the recipe. This is, and I'm going to jump back into my practice sheet and show a couple more things, but I'm just talking about colors now. Um, so this is where the formula lives. So if I double click on here, I could see that it's a formula that that is coming to this block, to the cell. So I don't want to enter data here. Here, one recipe gives yields me 32 cookies. And if I turn it to a two, I get 64 cookies and all these things increase. So that is what that means. So that's just one way to use color is say yes to the green blocks. Don't touch the gray blocks. Um, also just led making things more legible sometimes. Sometimes if things are tough to read, so I could, um, I'm holding control and I'm selecting every other line here very quickly kind of like that. And then I could make them um, something like that if I wanted to. These, these I'll keep as gray. So maybe easier to read. Um, so that's color. These are the grids. I don't change the font colors typically. This is also helpful, justification. So here you could see on my left-hand column, I typically justify everything to the left as opposed to the right. <clears throat> so again, it's really just for legibility. It's your preference, but I like things justified on the left there. And then here I get into everything being center justified. So that's left justified, that's center. And if I come up here to the space between the two columns and I double click real quick, it crunches things down to as tight as they could be. I don't want them as tight as they could be. I like a little more space so I could read more clearly and something like that looks better to me. Um, so that is 
oh, oh also merge and center is also helpful um so for instance these two columns um this is just just i'm just going to say um only informational and i'm going to come back and explain this after <clears throat> so i'm going to select these two cells here and then i'm going to go to merge and center and it does just that it merges the two cells and centers the information and then i'll come and put a thick border on that i could turn it to bold and now these two columns are just informational they're really not part of the equation um, i'm going to talk more about that in a second but that's just the merge and center all right so that's that's the basics the basic um the most basic stuff that i use uh you know like a lot of programs 20 percent of the program you could accomplish 80 percent of everything that you need to so i'm not an excel expert but um just with some basics i could accomplish a fair amount um now let me talk about quickly about the um putting equations in for instance so let's put in something here and let's turn this to the price to currency so four hundred dollars and this will be the quantity so we have two objects that cost four hundred dollars each and here so in excel whenever you want to create an equation you start with an equal sign that is telling excel that you are going to create an equation and you can there are different ways to do it you could it, input numbers if you have a, st a steady number that's part of the equation or you could select other cells and i'm going to do that first so i'm going to say that that what i want is this cell star which is multiplying times this cell enter so and if i had three of these objects now I would have $1,200. So that is, and then if I double click on this cell, it reads me back my formula. So if you're confused as to what a, a sheet is doing, you just double click and it'll, and it should begin to explain itself where, where numbers are coming from essentially. So this is saying it's equal to F16, which is here, F16 multiplied by D16. Um, another option is to put a number into that formula. So I could do equal this cell divided by, let's just do divided by, um, a given number, call it 25, enter. So now whatever comes here, 1200 there, it's going to get multiplied by this three and it's going to get divided by 25 for some reason and we'll see examples in these charts as to um in these sheets as to um sometimes i multiply cell by cell and sometimes i have to bring in a conversion factor or some kind of external number that's um, a given you might say um another another thing oh another helpful thing to do here so if i'm on this three and i select that box this little box comes at the very bottom right i could get on that like so left click hold pull it down and it'll populate it with all threes that is sometimes handy control z to step backwards or undo here so i'm just going to control z another helpful option is the same thing but now I am going to hold the control button down. Once I press that control button, you see that little plus that's popping up right there? Hold the control button down, pull, and then we get sequential numbers. Also helpful. Um, oh, and then one more thing, a different way to add things up, popular or useful often, is equal sum parenthesis. And then I could select this whole group of numbers end parenthesis enter so 150 is the sum of all those numbers so if we turn this one to 300 we should see this number increase by 297 
Okay. Oh, this is also helpful to point out. Um, so we see these numbers. So that is a function of this co this column being crunched down too far. When we crunch it down and, we, and the numbers don't display properly, that's what we see. So I come up here and I double left click and it opens it up. So after after doing a lot of data entry or creating things, then I often kept come across the top here and make sure everything is displayed properly and nice and tidy. Um, students will often print PDFs where things look like this and obviously you can't read it. It's useless. <clears throat> okay, so those that's the basic the basics of Excel. Um, now I'm just going to talk, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Like I said, this is a work in progress. Um, but for anyone who's new at Excel, new or, and, and wants to, you know, help with some recipe things, um, try their hand at it. This, hopefully this is helpful. Um, so we talked about the gray and the green, the difference between the two. These things, I just, sometimes when I Google things, how to do things, um, I just do take a quick screenshot or save an image and I can just insert them here, insert pictures. Um, this is just a reminder. So there are two new things that I tried on this that um, were new to me. So I just, as a reminder, because I forgot how I did it when I came back here, I just copy and pasted these in. So this Excel notes is my cheat sheet where I could write whatever I want. And um, just like, as it says, notes. Okay, I have four more sheets. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly now. So one is groceries. This is the cookie recipe. And then I have two on conversions. So this is the main one. And what this one does is scales up recipes. So I have the name of the recipe, where what book it was from. Some of the templates I saw would list the cooking steps here, but she has them. She has her things. I didn't do that. She has her things nicely printed out and um, hard copies. So I'd be surprised if she wanted to do that. But if there's could be could be a, a benefit to having the steps here as well. If it impacts information here, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> so what this does again, one batch yields 32 cookies, and I come in here and I double the batch and I get 64 cookies, and my one and a half cups of flour becomes three. So and she cooks, bakes a lot. So. 384 cookies we need 18 cups of flour so this i think is quite helpful um what i'm going to jump around a little bit as i do this of course um what what the goal i would i think a goal might be is to get the prices also of all of these ingredients here to that end as far as i got was getting the cost of an ounce of peanut butter at 17 cents here. Um, I have to speak to her and better understand that the shopping and everything and, and, and in order to make that work. So that hasn't been accomplished yet. But if I double click here on this 17 cents, it comes up this, this kind of gibberish. But that's the an, an equation right there. And it, it also shows up here and it says equals groceries um exclamation dollar sign so kind of gibberish essentially but what that's telling what the, what that's telling me is that here on this groceries tab in this grocery sheet that is where this came from this 17 right here so peanut butter jiff 40 ounces costs 6.99 so again in green is where we input our data so five pounds of flour cost seven and a quarter and then gray is where we get our information we get our data from our um, equations so if five pounds cost seven and a quarter double click here we're dividing the seven and a quarter by five to find out what one pound costs so it's a buck 45 for a pound of flour and if we want to see what it is in ounces it is um, nine cents for an ounce of flour. 
I'm not a baker, so I'm really not sure what she needs, but this is, I think, a step in, in the right direction. Similarly, 40 ounces of peanut butter for $6.99. We're paying 17 cents for a ounce of peanut butter. That 17 is coming right over here. So then we want to move other pieces of information. So I typed out AP flour and ounces as well. So then let me just show you how we connected that. Um, so this is from here, AP flour, and this is a simple copy paste. Well, not, not exactly simple. Control C. So I have the, I have this cell selected. Control C. I jump back here and I select this cell. I now I want to paste so I could come up here or I could right click um, paste special paste options I'm just going to come right up here it's the same thing paste special paste link right here this is new to me I've never moved things from one sheet to another but I think this is very simple and I think it's going to be very helpful and then there's the nine so if I jump back to groceries and the price of flour goes up to $8.99, not $899, $8.99, and now we're paying $0.11 cents an ounce, and that should be updated right here. When I double-click, again, it equals groceries, referring to this sheet, and then some gibberish describing the, um, the cell. Okay, so um, so that's what the groceries is. It's as simple as that. The item, the make, however we buy it, however we want to break it down, and with the goal of getting that information over here and seeing if we could figure out how much a batch of these costs. Um, that's the next step. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. This recipe, again... So one batch yields 32. So these numbers came off of her recipe sheet. Um, so one batch is one and a half cups of flour. So this is the recipe as it stands. Um, this, back to this only informational thing. So what, and, that's, and this is what this refers to actually, if I come back here to Excel notes right here, to convert a fraction to a decimal, to convert a fraction to a decimal. So this is the fraction, and this is what came from her recipe. One and a half cups is how it's described. So I typed out all everything as it was from the recipe. And once you put in the dash, it knows that it's a fraction, right? So I come here. Oops. I get, or maybe I turn this whole column. It looks like I turn this whole column into fractions. Let's just try this theory. Um, so right here, this cell is general. And once I type one and a half, enter, it turns it to a fraction. So it knows the dash turns it to a fraction. So these are all fractions. And then what it says on that Excel note tab is that we just turn it to general. And it turns them all to decimals. So that's what this informational piece is for. So this really isn't necessary, but this is just the process of turning my fractions to my decimals. Then these decimals are part of the formula. So this, the formula to create this is one and a half times whatever number goes in this box. So this is so this these formulas are not box times box it's box times the given number 0.5 which is the half of a cup of cocoa powder for instance all right so that's how that works these conversion notes were um she had some pen writing some handwritten things there so i just brought that over you know we could always of course create as many um columns as we need for however much information we want. Um, 
so here we could crunch this down for instance and then here we could do the merge and center again get that to look a little better merge and center merge and center so that looks pretty good um, one other thing just to quickly talk about is um, page layout page layout and i'm going to go back to these two conversion things page layout um, or view let's go to view actually well page layout is important so orientation is if we were to print this is it a landscape or a portrait so i would go with a landscape because it's a very horizontal chart and then view this is normal and then page break preview is very helpful so this is how it's going to print out on two pages in this fashion that's not helpful at all um so so i could just get on these and left click and hold and move them so i'm going to get rid of so i just by moving this i'm going to get rid of the second page because i don't have any recipe notes there the prices i don't need yet um so and i could also and then i could come down here and zoom in bottom right um i could also get rid of these informational things so i could so I select one, control, select two, right click, hide. What's weird, if I select these two now and I go to unhide, nothing happens. There's something glitchy with my Excel. That's how you should be able to get your columns back that you don't have. So you select one, unhide. So something is glitchy and weird. So I'm just going to go to control Z and keep these columns because it seems like I can't get them back. Um, that usually works just fine. Anyway, so this is what the sheet will look like now. And then I can go to file print. I could print it. Um, I could print it to a printer or I could print a PDF of it if I want a digital file that I could send to somebody, for instance, that I don't want to sell, send an Excel worksheet. So then view back to normal um okay let me wrap this up so that explains this conversions so two different things i found that i thought were interesting but again um now that i kind of figured out what i some things that i could do i need to tailor it to her needs um so i looking around i discovered that 1.91 cups of flour equals one pound so there are things that the recipes call for in cups, typically in cups and tablespoons and the like. And then there are ways that we shop, which might be different. Um, so getting all that to coordinate is kind of, I think, one of the big challenges and letting Excel do the work for you is what we're obviously trying to accomplish here. So um, again, enter on the green. We enter on the green and then we get results. So one pound equals 1.91 cups as we said so therefore if we're buying five pounds we get nine and a half cups and change or if we want to do it the other way around and we want a recipe or we we have a recipe that we've scaled up right so if we're over here and we're making we're making 15 we're making 15 times 32 we're making 15 batches of this we're making 480 cookies and we need 22 and a half cups of flour we come here 22.5 and we need nearly 12 pounds 11 and three quarter pounds so here we have some crazy decimals so let's go home more number formats number two decimals okay better so nearly 12 pounds of flour we need to do that um, and to accomplish this so i had to write this out to wrap my head around it again i'm not a baker so i wrote this out just as i read it 1.19 cups of flour and you know obviously i don't put the word cup in here because once you put words in there excel can't do the math um and then i just had to like like i said wrap my head around this and kind of rewrite the equations so that they make sense so one pound 
we could see one pound is 1.91, two is 3.812. So that's correct. And likewise here, is this 1.91 is one pound. So all my formulas are correct. And I did that by saying that this number multiplied by 1.91 gives us the cups, right? The multiplying sign. And then I double click here and this is division. This is saying take this number and divide it by 1.91. This took me a while to wrap my head around, <laughs> but it's helpful, I think. Um, again, I'll have to get feedback from her. And then finally, one more. This, this I found something online that had all written descriptions how to do this. And I think it was coming from a professional culinary school. Um, so again, we enter on the green and we get the gray results. So we have our ingredients and this is they, this is how they, the written descriptions, how to do it. They put all these numbers in. Um, so I just copied it. And what it's going to do is scale everything to grams. It's going to, it's going to take our ingredients. This is our measure. So we have, this should say cups. two and three quarter cups of flour. These conversion factors they gave me. So I guess this is a thing um, that you could look up. If you're a baker, you probably understand this, that these conversion factors exist and they are converting cups into grams. So I guess this is available information that's out there. If you wanted to expand on your ingredients, you'd have to find these conversion factors, I believe. Um, so that you need, this you have based on your recipe. And then we get it converted to grams. And that is by multiplying the cups by this conversion factor. And that gives us, that's telling us that we have 330 grams of flour going into this recipe. For a grand total that this recipe this batch weighs 964 grams and percentage wise if i double click on this it is saying take this number and divide it by the total and make it a percentage when i click on that it's a percentage um so what it's telling me is that flour accounts for nearly 35 percent of the total weight of this recipe again that means something to a baker it doesn't really mean much to me but um i know that they shop um i, I know i know that i know that doing things by grams and weight is more accurate than using cups and tablespoons that i know so i think that's that's probably a big part of the reason for doing it here and then to scale up and make a bigger batch, one that weighs a total of 200,000 grams, um, this is how much of each product you need. So interesting. Again, um, I need feedback and hopefully there'll be another round where I'll fine tune this and have some more insights and be able to share it again. Um, interesting, you know, but now I need a baker's help to pre provide some direction. Um, so. I hope this was helpful and I hope to uh, return with more information. Good luck.